Hey guys, my name is Dean Harris. I'm the Vice President of Sales here at Crest Core Realty. Welcome to the Investor's Guide to Memphis Real Estate Podcast, the podcast where we give out-of-state investors the boots on the ground knowledge they need to be informed, savvy, and win in the Memphis real estate game. As always, I'm joined by Douglas Skipworth. Douglas is our founder, principal broker of Crest Core Realty, Crest Core Property Management, along with our largest management client. So uh, as I say, every podcast, you eat the cooking. Yes. Um, you can listen to our previous podcast, guys, on Spotify, iTunes, our YouTube channel, Facebook page, anywhere that you listen to your regular podcast. Just search the Investor's Guide to Memphis Real Estate Podcast, and you'll find that. So, how are you this morning? Doing great. Yeah, good. Yeah, today's today's topic is going to be um, pretty aggressive. We're, we're, we, we rarely get on here and say go do this, right? Like right, you yeah, have true. to go and do this. Well, today we're going to, we're going to, you know, today's topic or, or, or title is why sell and buy right now? Like right this minute, yes, why absolutely. are we buying? Why are we selling right now? We, we get on here and I've, you know, we told our producer Alec here this morning, what our topic was. And he kind of chuckled and said, Hey, that's a, you know, that's a, that's a popular thing. It seems to be a theme. And truth of the matter is that it, that it is that that is what's happening right now um my when i'm talking to clients i'm encouraging them to buy and sell yeah. you know at at this moment like right now so let's talk for a second a bit about why you should sell and buy right now and yeah the sense of urgency for this to me has never been greater um, I've never no. been more aggressive when i talk to clients and say hey you should do this now if you've been thinking about it and you know, I just, and I hesitate a lot of times on just coming out and saying, Hey, you should do this, do this, yes. do this. But we showed you about a week ago, um, a clip or two weeks yeah, ago, a yeah. clip from a year ago right. where I said, Hey, if you're going to go buy in Raleigh, now's the time to buy in three, eight, one, two, eight Raleigh, because you're going to see some appreciation. It turns out it was about 30%. Wow. And we, we showed the clip, you know, a year ago when I said that, and maybe we'll do it again here. But I think you should buy get and your little sell. crystal ball. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we should yeah. put one of those right yeah. here. <laughs> right. But I, I feel, um, I feel really passionate about it right now. I'm buying yes. right now. Yes. I, I'm not selling cause that's not just what I do, but a I'm and I'm doing both. And, and, but I am like, after the show, I've already com committed, convincing my mind. I'm giving you another one. Yeah. So to see, sell. Cause I'm like, I right. got to take advantage of this opportunity. I saw a property last week that's on the mark, currently on the market. I was like, I got to sell the, of mine, got to sell this thing. Yeah. Want to get out now because it doesn't fit with, with the long term where I want to go. Yes. So now is the time to sell. Yes. If you're going to, I, I believe that right the second is. All right. Let's talk for a minute. Let's go into why sell now. Okay. Uh, one of my first kind of notes was, you know, prices have flattened. Um, we've seen over the last probably 90 days. We've seen not a screeching halt, but we've seen the brakes pumped on um, some buying action. Yeah, inventory has you know if you look at the, the statistics. Yeah, we, we're we're still looking at May, uh, April twenty twenty two. The May twenty twenty two data has not arrived yet, but April was the first uptick in inventory in a year. Yes, because it went it went down. Inventory went. Yeah. And it went, boop, it went up just a little, just a little <laughs> bit in April. You know, yeah. rates have come up some, mortgage rates, interest rates of the, the Federal Reserve. So the banks are lending that. So there's a little uptick in inventory, yeah. to your point. Which is a sign of there's a little slowdown on the buyer's end. Yes. And as you and I know, because we're in the real estate agent lingo world, mm -hmm. there's a shift going on. That's what yeah. the agents will talk about, the shift, and we are shifting. So the pendulum, as you know, you've been doing this, it swings yeah. from this unjustified optimism, mm -hmm. you know, or un, I guess unsustainable optimism to unjustified pessimism, and it just goes back and forth. But that goes from the buyers and the sellers. Yes. So it's like, it's also said as like a buyer's market. A seller's market, a buyer's market. And it rarely does it just kind of hang in hang here, right. happy for everybody. We came through an awesome buyer's market back yep. 10 years ago. Yep. And over that time, it has just shifted all the way up here to like unbelievable seller's market. Yep. Unbelievable seller's market. Like nothing I've ever seen in the 20 years I've been investing in Memphis. No, I haven't seen, 
I haven't seen this. I uh-uh. was in new construction in one, 2001, two and three, when it, four, when it was fire engine hot, but I never, I've, I haven't seen, I haven't swing this, seen it swing this bad on the. Cause the inventory has so low. Yeah. The demand is so high and the economy is okay. You yeah. know, it's not, it, it, there's high inflation. There's some things that people are concerned about, but everybody, most everybody seems to be doing okay. Yeah. But as I think you and I have seen, and we've been talking about this for weeks and weeks and weeks, seems like that, that pendulum isn't swinging out anymore. No, you and I were joking the other day. It's like, it's, it's kind of stuck. It hit the ceiling. It, it hit, hit it. whatever it's going to hit. It hit. And yeah. when it starts swinging back. So that's why if you're a seller, like it's not going to get better. No. As a seller. We're not market. swinging Inventory up any Inventory is way. increasing. Rates are increasing. Even though demand is still high, certain buyers are priced out. For, could be priced out because of rates, because of cash offer some other buyers. Yeah. Because of the appreciation that that's still kind of out there because of the low supply, high demand. Yeah. So anyway, that's why I'm like, I got to get rid of the two properties that I want to get, rid, you of. get rid of. You want to get rid of. I don't, to. I don't, you know, the demand, one of, one of the other notes I had was, and it's pretty simple, just the demand is still there. It's yes. not as, as sky high, scorching hot as it was, but it is still there. There are still plenty of people that are looking for investment deals every day. And they're looking for their residential home every day. So it's not, this isn't a screeching halt. No. But it, but it, it you said at the very beginning, we are in the middle of this shift. I, it hadn't shifted. So if you're the seller it's out shifting. there, you shouldn't freak out. Or if you're the no. buyer, you shouldn't go into a, a contract negotiation and think that the seller is going to just give everything away for you. That's not going to happen. They don't have to yet. Yet. But it, it, it is coming back. I do. Right. I, I, I agree with kind of your analogy. Like it, it's hit it. And we're just released from the the top oh, point yeah. and we've released and we're beginning to head back down. Like you and I for about a two week period thought, it, Hey, it's, it's stuck. stuck. Yeah. It's stuck right here at this, at this height of the seller's market. We're not going anywhere. Well, the last month I feel like, boom, it's released. Yeah. And we're not going to have this huge just windfall, but I believe it's crept down a little bit. Yeah. And I think it's going to creep down a little well, more. As, and probably and we more. know that rates are going to go up. I mean, that's, which will be another notch. Which will be another notch. So it's yep. like, you know, these things are coming. You know, inflation's there. You know, other things are happening in the economy. You know, there's uncertainty. So again, it, it's it's not scary. It's just be informed and act now. Yeah, I don't agree. I, that's important to say. I don't, I'm not, I'm not, <clears throat> as an agent that's, that relies on my personal income for real estate transactions, I'm not worried. Right. I'm not sitting right. here going... Am I going to be able to pay bills? No, there's going to be, there's going to be activity in real estate activity. I, I don't, <clears throat> excuse me. I don't believe that this is going to be some dark, big black cloud over us, but it is going to change. If you think and real estate always does, it's always an ever moving, yeah. you know, target, so to speak. I mean, it never sits in one thing for, for, you know, for very long and we're not going to sit we didn't sit in this buyer's, mar- you know, seller's market for too long, a year uh-uh. or so, yeah, two yeah, maybe, yeah. and and it's already shifting, right? So we're gonna see some higher rates, and it's gonna it's gonna affect that a little bit. So the demand is still there. The current market di- conditions are not gonna are, are gonna be here to last. You and I spoke yesterday. You know, I personally believe it's gonna stay still till we have another election. Mm. I, I think that it'll it'll probably wave back and forth a little bit, but I don't see anything dramatic happening between here and maybe another election cycle. And even then, you know, unless the rate is just going to continue to drop or go up or there's some kind of. Yeah, man, I think the gut and from, from an economic perspective, I think the government is going to try to rein in inflation a bit without putting us into a recession. We talked about that, the soft landing, are they able to do that with, you know, by the demand and supply and, and, there are uncertainties out there, economic, uh, more, more, you know, world political, geopolitical type of issues. Yeah. So those, those are above my pay grade, but those yeah. are, those are uncertainties. So, but as things are kind of moving forward, it's kind of like, Hey, if things go this way, yep. the rates are going to go up a little bit. They're going to try and tame it, the inflation. And, and if you're a seller, it just seems like now is the time to sell it because you don't know what else is going to come out and affect that. And that's why I'm like, Hey, 
I'm listing that property today. Yeah, and I, I think that's right. I think you're right for doing that. And I've anyone that's asked me, I've, I've said, hey, it's, it's still the time. And it's still the time. We're going to go in a minute, but it's still the time to buy. I, I very rarely sit here and tell somebody, hey, it's a great time to sell and buy. You know, usually it's that pendulum is on one side or the other. But I, I think for various reasons, we, you should still do both. What are some of the other reasons? Go yeah, yeah. And I, that's a great point. And because because I'm an advocate for buying now. So it's like, I'm like, blah, 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 yeah. both sides. So, <laughs> so I want to say it's like, you, you hear me saying it's like, I'm not going and liquidating everything I have. Right. That's not what I'm saying. I'm right. saying if there are properties that you want to sell, sell them now. Yes. Because I... I have properties that I need to sell. I've been talking about it and I listed one a few weeks ago and I was like, I, I need to list this other one mm -hmm. and let's do it and, and, and get those done mm -hmm. and reevaluate the portfolio. And so I'm saying if there are properties that you have considered selling or don't, that don't fit in your portfolio or you think you might want to sell, that, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm not saying get out of real estate. No, 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 no. I'm saying uh -huh. if you have something you want to upsize, reposition, liquidate, dump, unload, whatever, whatever the case, you call whatever it. you, whatever you need to get out of that property. Yeah. But I'm way going to say use those proceeds to go do something else yeah. in real estate. Because if you're not now the is the opportunity. So that's why I'm taking advantage of selling these two properties and buying this. So I told a guy yesterday on the phone, he, he was, we were having this conversation and going through this and, and, and I, he asked about the timing. He's like, you know, well, if I wait is, you know, do you see this, a, a slow bounce down and then a bounce back up? No, I, I, I actually said, Hey, if you're, if you're going to think about selling over the next two and a half or three years, you need to do it now. You need to do it now because the values are going that's right. That's you need what to I, do it now. It's I'm not, saying. it's not, you know, I, I don't, I'm not very good at drawing, you know, analogies, but I mean, like we're going to have a slow, steady, steady decline. The rights are going to go up and it's just, it's not going to be a, a crash where people no. are worried and they're freaking out. Don't, but Don't see that. In I don't the tea need, leaves. but when the rates begin to tick up, it's going to cause a little bit more worry and concern. You're actually going to have some investors that are going to be in that situation. I've given this, this kind mm, of scenario yeah. before where you got three houses and one's vacant and one and a half is paying the mortgage while all of a sudden the second one goes vacant and you need 20 grand to fix one of them up. And now you're not making any money. You're losing money actually every month and you're frustrated and then you're going to sell. I tell you, if you get to that point, you're going to be selling out of desperation and you're going to be making decisions of zero leverage yeah. position, yeah. right? You see what I mean? You're going to be, you're going to say, I got to sell Dean, try to get the most you can in three weeks. You're going to have another payment come on those. And you're going to say, Dean, get rid of them. Right. And it's a great point too. Cause again, what we're saying is be in control and sell now. Yes. Don't wait. Perfect. Don't wait and be out of control and have to sell, but like, Hey, look at your portfolio, look at a house, look at whatever you want and say, now is the time to sell this one. Or these properties mm -hmm. because you don't want to come to be for backed into a corner, man. You want to be in control. I want to go back to that. Be in control and sell now. You can sell later, but you're not going to be in control. Right. The market's going to control you. And yes. It's going to control that this, process. Right now, as the seller, you have more control. It looks like you have more control than you are going to have in the n near to mid future. That is... Dynamite. Again, that pendulum will swing <laughs> over over cycles, yeah. but that pendulum, <laughs> chances are, the, you know, pendulums don't usually swing like this. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they swing like this. So it's like the chances are that pendulum is going to swing back <laughs> right. at some point. So That's great, it's it? not going to stay no, over no. there, seller's yeah. market. Pendulums don't swing like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's great. so so this so that's what i'm saying is like be in control and sell now as opposed to waiting and then you're you don't have as much control as a seller that might be that's a powerful statement that might be the statement of the podcast cool it really might be be in control and sell now versus in a year from now or nine months from now the rates jacked up and all of a sudden you're you're making moves and decisions out of desperation and not and in i have been a seller so for great. for an active seller for the past five years yeah you know that yeah. you have listed dozens and dozens of properties yes right? yes and it has never 
been easier to be a seller. You've had never, I've never been in as much control as a seller as, you as are right I, now. I have been right now with offers and and accepting offers and evaluating offers and dictating terms or yeah. negotiation. You're in a stronger position in negotiation, yes. I would say. So, I 100% agree. I'll, I'll say it one last time, be in control and sell now. I think that's great. Okay. We've talked about selling. We we we've we agree that it's now's the time. Yes, you can be in control with doing it. It it seems like now. I think in six months from now you might be out of control. You it 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 sure looks like everything is saying you're going to have less control in the future. Yeah, so, I, I 100 so, percent believe so, that. I've been in this now. You, yep. Both of us have been 20, yeah, 20 years in the years business. Plus. So I've I've been through the the down and the up, and I've. I 100% agree with that. Cool. That statement. Okay, let's let's talk about buying. Um, the first thing I, I wrote this on the wrong column, but the first thing I would say for buying now is the the biggest thing. I don't above everything, above whatever else you can you can do. If you're in this for the long long haul, you're going to be building equity. Yes. Today, yeah. you buy today, you close today, your equity charge begins today. Right. And if you're in this for the long haul, what else is more important other than having that equity and that cushion? That's what you're paying. You're paying for the future for you're paying for that equity. You're paying to pay these houses down. So no matter what the rate is, no matter what the market looks like, if you buy a home, you're immediately starting to build equity in it. Yes. It, it is the, the analogy or the illustration of the tree. Okay. If you go, when's the best time to plant a tree? 25 years ago. <laughs> yeah. When's the second best time to plant a tree? Today. Today. Yeah. So if you, ha if you don't have a portfolio that's paid for, like how are you going to get a portfolio that's paid for? Buying property today and having them pay down. So don't, don't wait to buy real estate, buy real estate and wait. That's, that, yes. that's the tree analogy of, that's of, right. of, of, you know, buy that tree today. So, or plant that tree today, buy that house today. I, agree with you 100% on this. I told you I was with my wife and son on Friday night and we drove past a pro a, 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 a property that I had the opportunity to purchase at a fair price in a location that I wanted to be in. Mm -hmm. And I sucked my thumb. <laughs> And sat over in the corner and just chickened out. And I drive by that property often and think I could have had that property. How many years ago was it? Oh, that was maybe tw ten or twelve years ago. Yeah, great recession kind of time. Yeah, could have, could have had, could have, could have, could have, could have, should have, would have. But I do that with several streets. Oh, yeah. by our, our office had an opportunity to buy two houses and drive by those houses five days a week. <laughs> And, and, and it was, again, it was an opportunity in a good location at a fair price. And at the, when I say good location, I mean in a location that I want to be in. Yes. The two properties I talked about selling, I don't want to be in those locations right. long term. Right. That's why these other two locations I'm just referencing that where I missed an opportunity, like I, I, it was a fair price. Yeah. I had the opportunity at, the, at that price that made sense to be somewhere I wanted to be and I didn't do it. And that's where... I, that's why I'm always a buyer and I'm always looking and that's what I feel like Memphis has right now and why you got to take advantage of that. Did you feel like you learned a lesson with that? Do you, do always you, learning lessons you, from that. Do you look at a property now that you think, Hey, I might want it and go ahead and move on it. And yes. you, and you, you were, yeah. your like, mind the goes we, back to the one, when I purchased two months ago with you. Yeah. 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 Was that, was it like, is that really the perfect port property for the portfolio? I don't know, but it is a location that I've, I've always wanted to be in yeah. and I like it. It was a fair price yeah. and here we go. And it's going to be the long-term opportunity. I don't want to miss that opportunity because that was owned by that particular property was owned by family for 40 years. And this was switching. The, the, uh, there was a death in the family and there was an opportunity and that my opportunity might not come around again for 40 years. So I wanted to take advantage of that opportunity right now, right, right now. So, and be looking for opportunities like that. Waiting can be a huge gamble. It can be an enormous gamble. Always waiting. Um, there's no promise that this market is ever going to go back down. I don't, a lot of times people ask me, hey man, are you buying right now? Like that are not in the industry right. or whatever. That's right. Like, are you buying right now? Yeah. I'm looking for whatever I can find 
that makes sense in my payoff. I tell, and I, I like saying this, I tell investors this every day, a close friend of mine uh, that used to work here. You probably yeah, know yeah, yeah, about. yeah, yeah. Yeah, we went to lunch last week. Man, are you buying anything? Yeah, yeah. With these prices, you're still buying? Like he could not believe it. And I, and I looked right him in the face and I just said, hey, I, what do I care what the price is? And he sat there and he looked around, puzzled, and he couldn't figure out what I was talking about. I, I said, his name is Brian. I said, Brian, what if at the end of the day, you know what my strategy is? I want to retire off of these. And then I want, you know, when I'm I'm dead and gone, I want to pass them to the kids and let them either, you know, grow it or sell them or whatever they want to do with it. But I'm never going to sit there at the end of the day when I'm done and paying these off. And I'm going to look back and I'm going to say, man, in 2022. I bought 10 houses and overpaid for them by 20% or whatever, whatever. Yeah. Why in the world would I ever say that? I'm not, I'm going to say, man, overpaid. I did what I had to do at the time. And now, now I'm getting to where they're closing. I have, I have one on lock and var. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll give this as an example. I bought two years ago for about 52,000. It needed 25 in work. Yep. Great property rent for a thousand dollars. Awesome numbers. I just contracted one last week on lock and var. 28 square feet difference, same bed and bath count, 88,000, 30,000 more. Why do I do that? I don't care because the rent has gone up. Yep. It's not as good a deal yep. as my other lock and var. I don't care. It's not the idea. I'm not trying to win a competition on what deals I got. You know what I'm saying? There is no mm-hmm. competition on deals. You don't win a trophy for a deal. You don't hold up a banner, a gold medal. You don't get anything for a deal. You get to brag with your friends at dinner. Right. But what's that get you? Nothing. I'm trying to get them in a payoff, 15-year payoff system to where I can be done and retire. Yep. So waiting and choosing and saying, hey, next next year is going to be a better year for real estate. I'm going to wait till next year. I think that's the wrong mentality. I think you can, you, you're going to set yourself up to never be in it. Right, right. Always waiting for the opportunity that might never yeah. come. Imagine it, waiting for something that happened 20 years ago. Yeah. Hey, I'm yeah, going to yeah. wait till the house is back. That you're, you're going to be waiting for 20 more years and 40 more years. They're not coming yeah, back to yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I think there's some, some, some macro, those are awesome. And I completely agree with you because if the, if the, if the individual microeconomics, I guess, of that individual property work with, Here's the here's the price. Here's the rent. Here's the loan I'm gonna get. Here's the money I'm gonna put down. Whatever, and those that works awesome, right? You know, and that that buy yeah. buy it and make it happen if it's where you want to be and you've got that opportunity. Some some other reasons when I look at when I kind of zoom out from a macro level and we talk about this often is where we were in Memphis ten years ago versus where we'll be ten years from now, yeah. and everybody. There, there is not a person in Memphis who says they they wish they wouldn't have bought more real estate ten years ago because of what yeah. has happened in Memphis through appreciation and rent rates and it's just been everybody I talk to wishes they had bought more because they can't believe it. Yeah, and I think as we look forward, you know, the Memphis Area Chamber of Commerce put out in April. Okay, in March of 2022, they re, they had already regained all of the jobs lost mm-hmm. during COVID. Yep. So Memphis was already back to square one. In April, Memphis had a record number of jobs in the MSA or the county for uh, for the, the Memphis region was a record high of number of jobs ever in the Memphis area. And that's a tailwind that we've talked about before that's happening in Memphis that will continue to happen into the next decade. So we've talked before that employment, there it is. We've talked before about wages going up. Now we're talking about full employment employment numbers numbers going up. So rents go up. So it just seems like as the the demand for rent, the supply for houses, it's not like we're building houses left and right in Memphis. No, There's some apartments here and there. There's some new houses here and there, but there are still, there's still more demand than there is supply, which is raising up, home prices, which is raising up the rent prices, which again, looking out 10 years from now, you're going to say this was a great time to buy. Yes. Great time. Look at it this way with the rate going up. This was my next note with, yes. with the rate That's going other, up. Yes. You're going to have buyers have let This is going to fall down the chain. 
that your 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 high end buyers they're going to be knocked down a notch because the rate. Your middle of the road buyers, you know, the, the 200, 250, 300, they're going to be knocked down a notch. Your lower buyers are going to be knocked down. Your ones that could barely afford are not going to be able to buy. Well, it's already happened. When right. they're renting, you are 100% right. So what right. does that mean for us as investors? Right? The, rent, the rent demand is going to continue to increase. And one thing, so amen, you are right on. So again, the, the rents will increase over time. The demand is increasing. The supply is not increasing as fast. No. Things are happening in Memphis. We've talked about Louisville City. We talked about all the stuff that that has that is happening in Midtown and downtown and all <laughs> around the region in the, the e-commerce and how it's really benefit. Memphis is set up for distribution and transportation. And so this we we're good for the, the this yes. economy. One thing and why it's important now that that, that you just smit by is his rates are going up. Yes. So, so two things. Number one is they're going to be, it's going to be more expensive. If you don't buy today, it is going to be more expensive in the future. Yes. That might not be a bad thing. Again, if you individually make your deal work, but it's going to be cheaper to buy today. Yes. Then it's most likely going to be in the future. That said, don't be scared yeah. because these rates are historically low. Mm -hmm. I locked in a big deal three years ago at a rate that is comparable to what you're going to get in the next couple of months. Right. Still, but, but you know, and you still were happy I'm, as all get out right happy then. Happy as all get out because <laughs> yeah. I've been doing this for a time enough to know that the rates are still unbelievably low. Yeah. It just happened that we, I happened to hit it at the height and then, then COVID came and other things and rates went low. Yep. That's okay yeah. because they're still historically low. So they're still historically low. So buy now and lock those rates in. That's right. Now, we're going to create still more historically tenants. Low. I mean, if you're that investor and you're thinking, hey, that it's kind of a, hey, we can't buy because it's too expensive. We have to rent. You know what I mean? Like, I think we're going to find a ton of those, like a yes. lot. I don't, I don't and really more think and it's more. Gonna, yeah. I think it's going to, every month, I think that's going to go up as the Correct. rate goes the, and the, the, prices the, go. the, the median price in Memphis is... Two hundred and fifteen thousand. We can go back to when when we started this. The median price was fifty ninety nine thousand in yeah. two thousand seven. I mean, that's half of what it is now. Yes. So so that was in ninety seven. That's in ninety nine. No 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 no. Two thousand and seven. Two thousand eight. Like at the Great Recession, it was ninety nine thousand. That was just thirteen or fourteen years ago. Yeah. I and mean, now it's a two fifteen. So what is it going to be in fifteen years? Three hundred and twenty. You see what I mean? Like, who knows? But the, the point is, is buying rental properties now, you're able to make them work now. I only think it's going to get better. I think the rate, the rent's going to go up. I think the, the, there's going to be more tenants. I think the 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 idea or, or the investor owner is going to be in a much better shape as this goes along. I don't think the investors are going to be worse off. I really don't. Not here in Memphis. Now, in other areas, I'm not sure what those, you know, what those economics look like. But I think in Memphis, there's going to be less people that can buy. We, we, we have historically had low credit scores. We've had, you know, um, not more blue collar jobs yep. than yep. not. So Memphis is going to stay a tenant based city. Yep. And I think it's going to get even more and that's percentage not, of that's a tenant That's not base. necessarily bad. I mean, it's not, not there are us. people who like to rent. Yeah. There are people who like to be, have the flexibility, not have the worries and cares that homeowners have. Yes. So, so it, again, being a renter isn't bad. And some people choose to be renters and that's okay. And so it is a good, being a good landlord is providing a real service in Memphis. And yes. you can distinguish yourself if you do those things that we've you, we've talked about on many shows of doing the rehabs right, doing the yes. repairs, doing fix it, doing replacements instead of patch jobs and doing the things that help continue to make your house desirable. Yes. That's why I've known I'm that's this is part of the reasons why I'm telling you to do both. You know what I mean? Yes. It's just I've never sat here I mean, it's kind of odd, but I've never sat here and really said do both. I, I've been, I've, I've had markets where I'm like, do one. Hey, you got to sell or you got to buy or you got to whatever. It's been very rare that I've been able to sit here and honestly say, hey, for both sides, this is great. But I think there, that's the one gap. Yes. <laughs> we're in the one, like in our pendulum that we're, yeah, yeah, that we're yeah, talking yeah. about. Yes. I think we're in that very, on the way back down here, I think there's that one sliver where for both sides, it, it's still good.
I do think it's going to come back down a little bit more. I still don't think we're going to be able to say, hey, don't ever buy. Sellers might run into a situation where they don't want to sell, but I don't ever, because no. of the reasons we've just named, equity build, you know, the, the, the tax implications that you have as being a real estate investor, those don't ever change with the market. Appreciation, tax benefits, and what else can we think of that never change with the market? I mean, those two things don't. You always get the tax benefits from doing it, and you always get yeah. The they call they say it's ideal, and I'm, I might miss all of, them, but it's the acronym: income, depreciation, expense, appreciation, okay, leverage. Okay, so, so there these it are is the, right yes, there. These are the things that real estate provides you as an investor that are market. Um, uh, agnostic proof. yeah they're yeah not, they're not. market proof they don't it doesn't matter you always get income you always get depreciation you always get appreciation you always get equity build up you always get the leverage again some of those are better than others think about appreciation that it might be lumpy as opposed to very, very smooth but but it can be ideal hey let's make alec let's make sure that we have had that on there. That's great too, man. You've had two zingers today. Cool. Ideal that's is what great. I get paid for. That's right. That's the big bucks, man. <laughs> yeah, I hear that's you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the big bucks from this podcast. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I think that those two quotes today, I, I I think we'll wrap it up on there. Do you have anything else? To no, add? man. It just it is it, 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 as we've said is like I mean you can say them, but now is the time to do both. To do both, being uh, from a selling standpoint, be in control and sell now. I, yes. I'm, I'm going to end the podcast with Love these two that. things. Be in control and sell now. We we feel like you're going to lose control later. I don't, not next you, month later, but towards the end of this year, Q3, Q4. You're already seeing it. You're already, you're already seeing it's it. It's already happening. That you're going to lose it's some shifting. control. So be in control and sell now. The ideal for buyers, repeat that again, because the, it's. Cause, cause you always, cause it's like planting that tree. If you didn't do it 15 years, 25 years ago, you want to do it today because real estate provides the income the depreciation mm -hmm. it's got expenses that go with it it appreciates and, and you can use leverage that's awesome yep those are so if you're ever asking yourself should i buy or sell right now the answer is yes to both now I just yeah gave you so that's the, the ideal exact, that's what they say now is the ideal time because yes. of all of those things ideal time to, to to buy and be in control of the sell now it's yeah. awesome love it anything else today no man that's great great guys thanks for tuning in itunes spotify youtube facebook page uh just search uh, investor's guide to memphis real estate you can find that out um, email me with questions dean at crestcore.com we'll see you next time